fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. G-Man Jimmy is eight years old. He is strong and he is bold. He can capture outlaws cause he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing oat cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready-to-eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. That's right. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! A furious battle was in progress in the town of Shady Bend. Bob Hawkins and the Lone Ranger's nephew, Dan Reed, fought side by side against half a dozen other boys. Dan had been taught by the Lone Ranger how to dodge and parry blows and how to hit effectively. He and Bob Hawkins blackened several eyes and bloodied the noses of a couple of boys. And finally, the attackers withdrew. Come on, fellas, we'll get Hawkins next time. Yeah, we'll get you, Hawkins. You sure you're not wandering our shady bed? We got as much right to live here as you have, and you're not going to drive us out. You're part of the killer. You're part of the killer. Why, you... Let him go. We gave him something to think about. Hey, why'd you pitch into the fight and help me out? You needed help. The odds were against you. Say, uh, I'm Bob Hawkins. I guess you heard what some of the fellas said about my dad. I'm Dan Reed. I heard about you, Bob. In fact, I came here to look you up. Your dad was a friend of my... Uh, was a friend of a friend of mine. Oh. Well, they all say dad was no good, but that's not true. He was a swell dad. He, he wanted money so I could go to school. He got mixed up with, with some smugglers. Golly. But he wasn't bad. And he didn't kill anyone in spite of what the law said. The rest of the gang framed him. You gotta believe that. I believe it, Bob. You saw how the boys were picking on me, Dan. I don't mind that so much. It, it's the way that grown ups treat my mother. None of them speak to her anymore. Well, I won't sit still for that. I can hear her crying almost every night when she thinks I'm asleep. I'm going to do something about it. I'd like to know your mom, Bob. Would you come out to our house? I'd like to. Oh, would you? Would you really? Oh, gee, that'd be great. Come on, Dan. We, we live right over there. It's not much of a place. We we had to move after Pa was buried. We used to have a lot bigger house. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto were waiting in camp when Dan returned and told about the fight and the visit to Bob Hawkins' house. According to Bob, most of the crooks are still at large. His dad's the only one who was caught. Yes, that's right. The smugglers' organization is still practically intact. Are they still smuggling guns into Mexico? Oh, I think they'll lie low for a time and start operations again when they consider it safe. Those crooks. They should have been hung instead of Bob's father. If they're not found, Dan, they'll expand their power. So they become a real danger to the international relations with Mexico. Furthermore, a government agent has been murdered. Every man who had a hand in that must pay. 
I wish something could be done so Bob wouldn't have to leave town. Oh, is he leaving? Uh Uh-huh. He and his mother can't earn enough to live on. Bob's leaving in the morning. He'll get a job someplace where he's not known and then send for his mother. Hmm. In the morning, huh? Yes, sir. Why? I want to talk to that boy. I'll see him tonight. That night, Bob Hawkins lay awake in his bed long after his mother had sobbed herself to sleep. The moonlight slanting through the open window fell in a square patch on a rolled-up blanket that held Bob's few possessions. It rested in a corner ready to go with the boy at daybreak. Then the shadow of a man's head and shoulders appeared, and a voice came from the window. Bob. Huh? What? Take it easy, Bob. There's no need to awaken your mother. Who are you? Bob turned toward the window as he leaped from bed. There was light enough to reveal the fact that the midnight visitor was masked. What does that mask mean? Are you one of the gang? Don't let the mask mislead you. Come over to the window, Bob. I, I want to talk to you. If you're one of the crooks of No, fame. I'm not. I want to get those crooks who ruined your father. And I want to help you. No one can help me. I don't want any Bob, help. also, I want you to help me. I'm not helping anyone. That's a mistake my father made. I knew your father... He was a good man until he met Tom Martin. The law said he was a smuggler and a killer. Bob, I want you to help me make Tom Martin and his pals pay for what they've done. Why doesn't the law get them like they got dead? The law must have proof against those men. You might be able to help me get that proof. How? You're planning to leave town. I figured on leaving at daybreak. My blanket rolls already. I, I want you to leave, but not at daybreak. Before you go, I want you to do some talking in town. Talking? Yes. Stay in town for several days while you talk about leaving to get a lot of money. I'll tell you what to say. The Lone Ranger spoke in a low voice for over half an hour while Bob listened with mounting interest and enthusiasm. The boy did not leave town at daybreak. He stayed around for several days, during which he dropped remarks in certain places and did some carefully planned bragging. Soon after Bob Hawkins left Shady Bend, a man named Bart Jenkins mounted a horse and rode hard to a cabin in a woods not far away. Tom Martin and several other men were there. They came out to meet Jenkins. Ho, ho, ho! Riding hard, Bart. Yeah, what's up? Something I... wrong? Tom, I got news. Well, let's have it. Jim Hawkins' wife and son have been having hard going since the trial. You knew that. That's not my worry. I gave Jim Hawkins what I promised. Yeah, he got his share. He didn't do any of the dangerous work like the rest of us. We didn't need him at all. It was Tom's idea to have him act as front man and handle the cash. And it was a good idea. He's the one who was seen, so he's the one who got his neck stretched. As for handling the cash, none of you would trust me. And I felt the same way about you, critters. You only thought you could trust Jim Hawkins. What's that, Bart? Remember you thought he should have got more cash than he collected? Yeah. That's what we thought. Well, it looks like he did. Huh? He held out on us. He held out? He hid away a lot of the cash, and now his son is going to get it. What's that? Bob didn't know I was working with you, Tom. He told me a few things, bragging sort of. He's got a masked man and an engine to help him, and they were riding... How did it happen he talks to you so free? He's glad to have someone who listens to him. Not many people talk to him. What about the masked man and Indian who are helping him? After what he told me, I kept watch on him. He got enough cash from Summers to buy an old horse. This morning he left town, so I followed for a ways. Outside of town, he met the Indian and the masked man. The three started along the trail toward Pleasantville. Well, why didn't you follow them? Those two men wore guns tied low. I didn't want to take chances. So I come here fast. We can cut them off on the trail if we go over the mountain. Maybe we should let the boy have that cash. After all, Hawkins took his medicine without telling on the rest of us. Only because I told him his wife and kid would get hurt if he did. If he held out on the cash, I want it. Me too. Get the horses, boys. The four of us will be able to handle the boy and his pals. We'll bring him back here and ask some questions. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had left Dan Reed in charge of the camp while they rode slowly toward the town of Pleasantville with Bob Hawkins. Presently, they saw four horsemen approaching from a hill on the south. There's Tom Martin. He's been suspected of many crimes. No one ever had proof against him. There's Bart Jenkins. He lives in town. One of the men you talked to? Yeah. Bob, I think you're looking at the men who ruined your father. If I had a gun, I'd make them pay. No, the law must get them. Now remember, Bob, you too, Tonto. Do exactly as I said. Me remember, Kimosabe. Right in there, you're covered. Hold on, hold on. They've all drawn guns. All right, Bob. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Bart, why are you waving a gun at me? Take it easy, Bob, and you won't get hurt. 
He's my friend. And he's a my friend. There won't be gunplay if you do as I say. What do you want? I want to talk to you and the kid, but not here. We're taking you where we can talk without being disturbed by someone coming along the trail. Oh, you are? Beaver. Yeah? You and Bart take their guns. Right. Take off that man's mask. We'll see who he is. Oh, one minute. Are you planning to make prisoners of us? What's it look like? <laughs> Don't try it. We'll go with you to talk, but if you try to disarm us, we'll argue the point. Two of you armed against four of us? Some of you would get hurt before you got us. Maybe he's right, Tom. All right, for the time being, you can keep your mask and guns. As for later on, we'll see. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties and do, do, do an okay. Okay. That goes for the star wherever you are. Take Barbara Ann Scott, figure skating champion from the Northland. Watch her on this one. Barbara Ann's good. Now, there is a champ who's a real Wheaties fan. Sure helps to keep a gal up on her toes. A guy, too. Take Bob Lemon, who pitches a lot of ball for the Cleveland Indians. Lemon knows what champions know. Wheaties for breakfast, away you go. Gosh, no wonder the champs of tomorrow are eating Wheaties today. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. Now to continue. Tom Martin looked at the masked man and saw what he thought was a trace of a wink. He accepted the Lone Ranger's offer to go to the shack without resistance if no effort were made to disarm or unmask him. Bart Jenkins rode ahead to show the way. The Lone Ranger followed, accompanied by Bob Hawkins and Tonto. In the rear, Tom Martin and the two remaining smugglers held their guns in readiness. One man was left outside the shack as guard, so there would be no interruption. The others went inside. Martin eyed the masked man for a moment. Now we can talk. I think I know what you want to discuss, Martin. Before we get down to business, we'd better send the boy outside. Who, me? Now, hold on. Quiet, Bob. Why can't he hear what you're going to say? Because unless you're outside, I won't talk. Take him outside and tell Joe to watch him. Right, Bones. How about the Indian? He stays. Good going, Bob. Well, this is a dirty trick. Don't no, come I want to hear what you say. Hey, Joe. Most want you to keep an eye on the boy and see he don't get away. I'll watch him. Now then, how about getting down to business? I'm ready if the mask man is. How about it? I'll let you keep your mask and guns, and I've sent the boy out. Now, is there anything else you'd like before you're ready to talk? I'm ready now. It is true, isn't it, Bart, that Bob Hawkins told you his father had received some cash from the last shipment of guns across the border? It strikes me as odd that the kid didn't speak of it or do something about it before this. He knew very little about it until I talked to him. Even now, he can't locate the cash. Without my help. You tell us where the cash is hidden. Oh, no. No, Tom. I won't do that. I'll get the boy to talk. He can't tell what he doesn't know. Why, you... Martin, here's the situation. I know that a lot of money paid for smuggled rifles by Mexican renegades is hidden. But I don't know where. To get that information, I must call on a certain man. And he won't talk unless I take Bob Hawkins with me. You'll have to see the boy to be sure Bob's in on the deal. After I have that information, I'll need help. More help than the Indian can give you? Yes, I'll need your help. That's why I was willing to come here for a discussion. Ah. You want us to go partners with you, hmm? Oh, you might say so. And split the cash seven ways? No. The two outside don't have to be cut in. You mean Joe and young Bob? <laughs> You're a cool one, ain't you? <laughs> You, uh, know what I mean? Yeah. You mean we eliminate the people we don't need when we're through with them. It's a good idea. <laughs> I'll take that deal. Now, where will we find the hombre who can tell us where the cash is hidden? You'll know when we get there. You we're heading toward Pleasantville. We go beyond Pleasantville. We can reach our destination by sunset. And we'll start right now. 
The Lone Ranger, Bob, and Tottle went with the four smugglers to a small community called North Flats. It was nearly sunset when they drew rein in front of the general store, the only building at the crossroads. Oh, 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 oh. So this is the place, hmm? Yes. I'll go into the store with Bob. Come along, Bob. All right. You stay here, Redskin. Uh, me stay here. The store was lighted by only a small window in the open door. The smugglers outside couldn't see too clearly. They didn't know that the man behind the counter was not the regular storekeeper, that his beard was false, or that he was actually a special agent for the government, working by prearrangement with a lone ranger. Those men outside are the crooks. If we get evidence against them, we must find where they have hidden the money. Their records and their guns, they still hope to sell. Just tell me the next move and I'll play along. Those men think the law is after them. They'll hurry across the border. They'll be sure to take their cash with them, and most likely their rifles and their records. I see. When they go for those things, they'll reveal their hiding place. Eh? Yes, that's it. Well, how are you going to make them believe the law is after them? I'm going to fire my gun and make them think I've killed Bob Hawkins. Uh, they'll know that in a murder case, they'll share the blame with me, because we're all together. Now, Bob, you stand wish we could hear what's going on inside. Let's go closer. Better we stay here. Do what masked men say. The Indian's right. Tom, I don't like what I see in there. The boy's trying to talk and the masked man's trying to stop him. Hey, he's drawing a gun. He's pointing it at the boy. I don't want gunplay. Not here. Why are you... Hey, he started gunplay. Shots will bring men from the houses over yonder. Here comes the masked man. You pay, you pay. Get going before he finds another gun. You gun crazy fool. Get going, you hear? The boy started talking. Easy, said big fellow. Why'd you shoot him? Save the questions. Get out of here. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. The six men rode hard away from town and maintained the fast pace for several miles. Then Tom Martin signaled a halt. Hold on, hold on, hold on, big fella. Oh, we can stop here for the horses to get their wind. And for you to tell me why you started gunplay. You'd have done the same thing, Martin. That man in the store wasn't the storekeeper. Who was he? A special agent for the government. Oh, What's that? He must have learned that someone would go there. He took the storekeeper's place. When Bob found it out, he told the man who you were. Why, that What little... else did he say? He told about your hideout, your shack in the woods. Why didn't you shoot sooner? I did the best I could. You should have killed the government man. Oh, no, that's too risky. The law always gets the killer of a government man. I disarmed him with a bullet. That gave us time to get clear. All right, get going, boys. Head for the shack. Yeah. And you, mister, you and your engine pal, don't try to come with us. I've had enough of you and your ideas. Suits me. Come on, boys. Get up. Come on. Get him up, scout. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode at an angle to the route of the four smugglers and were soon out of sight in a stand of timber. Tom Martin and his men continued as fast as their horses could travel to the shack where they had lived for the past week. Oh, 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 oh. oh. we got to work fast. We aim to get across the border with the things we got there. Bart, uh, you stand watch. Let us know if anyone comes this way. Right. The rest of us will get the stuff together. You think we can take the time? We can't cross the border broke, can we? We worked too hard to get our pile of cash together, and we'll need the names of those men we deal with in Mexico. I'll get the records. Get to work, boys, and pass. All right, I got the cash and records. You boys take those rifles. All of them? Certainly. Can't leave them here as evidence. Time and bundles. Each of us carry a bundle. If they get too heavy, we'll hide them someplace between here and the border. Hey, someone's coming through the woods. Yeah, we've got to have a little more time. If it's Lawman, we'll have to fight it out. Hell, we can leave the rifles and... I'm giving the orders. Look, it's that white horse, the masked man. Come in here. He's got plenty of nerve. Now, what's he want now? You'll soon find out. Why'd you come here? Who's over who? I had several reasons, Martin. There's one thing I wanted to tell you and your men. Well, what is it? Speak fast. We haven't time to listen to talk. You boys get those rifles tied up. Oh, there's lots of time. You're not going across the border. Who ain't? What do you mean by that? There's a lot you men don't know. I came to tell you that in the first place, Hawkins didn't hold out any cash. What? But that kid told he me... He told you just what I told him to tell you, Bart. He told a number of people the same thing, to see who would rise to the bait. I suspected you might be the one, but I wasn't sure. Why, you... You crooks ruined the life of Bob's father. Nearly ruined the life of the boy. But I think things will be all right now. I don't like the way you're talking. It's beginning to sound like you tricked us. <laughs> you're getting warm, Tom. Huh? I... Thunder, you're a lawman. I'll kill you for this. Tom, I thought you'd say that. I hoped you wouldn't say it before some men got close. Well, I'm saying it now. And I'm acting. No! Hey, 
The first shot came from behind a nearby tree and blew the gun from Martin's hand. Others followed quickly, and several men moved into view behind their blazing guns. I'm quitting. I give up. Don't shoot. We'll shoot to kill unless you throw down your guns. Tom Martin was the last to quit. One arm hung limply at his side, but he drew a gun with his uninjured hand. As he brought it to bear, the Lone Ranger leaped forward. No, you don't. Don't. Let go my wrist. Drop the gun or I'll break your arm. All right, all right. My hands are up. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. shooting. Now all these handcuffs, then you're day in court. This evidence you dug up, well, it looks like we'll be hanging. Mr. Dale, you and your man won't need to with me any longer. No, we can take care of these crooks now. And from the looks of things, I'd say there's evidence enough to hang them all. Oh, uh, just one thing before I go. Uh, about Bob Hawkins. I'll see that he's made the hero of this capture. And furthermore, there's substantial rewards. Good. Then Bob and his mother will be taken care of. Well, adios, Dale. You ready, Toto? Ready. Hey, wait. You've earned a share of those rewards. Just tell your boss in Washington that our mission was accomplished. Easy, steady, Come on, Phil. Get him up, Scout. Hey, Mr. Dale, that masked man, he's leaving. Come on, That's right, Bob. He doesn't stay around after his mission's accomplished. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger.